Hi, and welcome to this fourth devlog of Orbis Multiplex, a complex, simulation-oriented, 4x indie strategy game on a planetary scale. In this video, I'll show and briefly describe a vegetation model which I recently added to the project. Up until this point, the planet has been barren, only filled with rock, sediment and water, but no life. Vegetation is a cornerstone of all ecosystems. It is through the photosynthesis of plants that other living organisms get access to energy, directly or indirectly. Ecosystems are often visualized using pyramids like these, where the abundance of an organism decreases the higher up you go. From the perspective of my game, three divisions should be fine, those being vegetation, herbivores and carnivores. As of yet, I have only implemented the vegetation, the other two parts will be the topic of the next devlog video. It should also be said that I have only implemented a simulation for a terrestrial vegetation. Marine vegetation is something I will have to look into at another time. A typical plant looks something like this. There are multiple factors which affect growing conditions. Some of these are carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, light from the sun, minerals and water from the ground, and temperature. There are multiple additional factors like pH levels of soil, wind strength, and disturbance patterns like fire. But these five are the most fundamental. To make my life a bit easier, I've chosen to only look at sunlight, water, and temperature at the moment. In my model, a plant is characterized by two parameters, a height and a canopy area. This can be thought of as a cylinder. The top area of the cylinder is proportional to the amount of sunlight required, whilst the volume is proportional to the amount of water required. The height of the plant also determines if it's shaded by other plant species. Different species of plants could be thought of as cylinders of different shapes. The blue could, for example, be a large tree like a pine, whilst the red could be a bush like a cacaea, and the green a grass. The left area here could, for example, be a dense forest, whilst the area on the right a grassland dotted with a few bushes and trees. As mentioned, taller species can shade lower species. Mathematically, I do this using an exponential decay function. As light passes through the canopy, it will be absorbed. The thicker the canopy, the faster it is absorbed. This means the tall plants never have to compete for light, whilst plants like grasses and shrubs may suffer in dense forests. The very scientifically accurate graph to the right shows how the amount of light at a certain height decreases as it passes through the canopy. To simulate the growth of vegetation, I use a set of differential equations. This here shows a logistic growth function. N is the population size and A is the growth rate. If vegetation is left undisturbed, it will grow up to the carry capacity K. In my case, the carry capacity of a plant is determined by the amount of light, water and temperature. This code shows five types of plants which are specified at the moment. Note the different values for water and light need. Theoretically, the code could handle any number of plant species, but for the sake of performance, these five categories have been chosen. We can now take a look at the results. These graphs show how the five different categories of plants grow for different settings. If I, for example, set the precipitation very low, only grasses and shrubs will thrive, since they have a low water need. If I increase the precipitation slightly, trees start to grow. As the precipitation grows higher and higher, trees tend to dominate more and more, whilst grasses and shrubs decrease in number since they are being shaded. When the temperature is lowered, the total biomass gets gradually lower, until barely nothing can grow anymore. Let's look at how this system works on the planet. Now vegetation is simulated for every land type. The column map used goes from grey to yellow to green. The darker the green, the higher the biomass. Biomass is a measurement of the amount of vegetation. Along the equator, large rainforests develop, rich in biomass. At plus minus 30 degrees latitude, this is sent for. This is highly dependent on the precipitation map used. At the moment, a very simple latitude based precipitation model is used. In the future, I would like to improve the model to include rain shadows and evapotranspiration effects. But overall, this vegetation model looks promising. One can see that vegetation decreases with elevation. This is an effect of lower temperatures at higher altitudes. When the actual game mechanics are added to the game, this vegetation map will be very important. 
the vegetation of an area will determine how much wood can be gathered for fuel or as building material. It will also impact grazing potential and the amount of wildlife. The vegetation simulation currently takes 2 to 3 minutes for the entire planet. Since the ecosystem of one tile is independent of adjacent tiles, the computations could be done in parallel on the GPU. I will look into this at a later time using compute shaders. In the next devlog video, I will implement an animal simulation which will run on top of this vegetation model. With this, I will to end this devlog. As always, the project can be found on itch.io where a free copy of the game, at its current stage, can be downloaded. Thanks for watching.